Okay, Senator Bernie Sanders apologized to former Vice President Joe Biden for an op-ed written by one of his campaign's surrogates accusing Biden of having a corruption problem. Sanders supporter Zephyr Teachout yesterday wrote an op-ed for The Guardian entitled Middle Class. Joe Biden has a corruption problem. It makes him a weak candidate. In it, she writes in part, quote, it looks like middle class Joe has perfected the art of taking big contributions, then representing his corporate donors at the cost of middle and working class Americans, converting campaign contributions into legislative favors and policy positions isn't being moderate. It's the kind of transactional politics Americans have come to loathe. Sanders later apologized for the piece, telling CBS News, quote, it's absolutely not my view that Joe is corrupt in any way, and I'm sorry that op-ed appeared. Biden accepted Sanders' apology in a tweet last night, writing, thanks for acknowledging this, Bernie. These kinds of attacks have no place in this primary. Let's all keep our focus on making Donald Trump a one-term president. Over the past couple of days, Senators Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren have both come after the former vice president for his stance on Social Security. On Sunday, Sanders told the Washington Post, I think anyone who looks at the vice president's record understands that time after time after time, Joe has talked about the need to cut Social Security. I don't think that is disputable. And Warren echoed Sanders also on Sunday, telling Politico, as a senator, Joe Biden had a very different position on Social Security, and I think everyone's records on Social Security are important in this election. But in a scathing column for the New York Times entitled Biden, Sanders and Social Security and Smears, Paul Krugman writes that lying about a rival is bad, even if you don't like his past positions. He writes in part, while the news media has been focused on the spat between Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, something much more serious has been taking place between the Sanders campaign and Joe Biden. Not to sugarcoat it, the Sanders campaign has flat out lied about things Biden said in 2018 about Social Security. And it has refused to admit the falsehood. This is bad. It is indeed almost Trumpian. The last thing we need is another president who demonizes and lies about anyone who disagrees with him and can't admit ever being wrong. Biden deserves an apology now, and Sanders probably needs to find better aides. The smearing of Biden reinforces the concern some of us have about Sanders. There's always been an ugly edge to some of Sanders' support. All right. Uh, so, wow. uh, Will, Willie Geist, um, Talk about, uh, I won't even say fighting words because it's coming from Paul Krug Krugman. Uh, it's just, uh, just a very harsh takedown of Bernie Sanders and his campaign who finds itself by, by being so aggressive and being on the offensive all the time, which is sort of bizarre considering the last Des Moines Register poll had him in first place. Uh, they are now finding themselves on the defensive for one attack after another. And, you know, again, you're in first place and you're, you're lying about Social Security. I mean, this is, this is a smear that's been used forever and it just doesn't, I don't think it's gonna work on Joe Biden. I, I, what's the strategy behind this? Well, there are two separate issues here. The first one that Mika laid out was the op-ed written by Zephyr Teachout, who, teach out, who is a, uh, has uh, endorsed Bernie Sanders and, and stumps for Bernie Sanders. He apologized for that, calling Joe Biden corrupt. The other question, though, to me is a, a bigger question, Jason Johnson, which is that you have a someone on Bernie Sanders' staff releasing a snippet that was taken completely out of context, right. a speech that Joe <laughs> Biden made a couple of years ago where he sort of sarcastically talked about Paul Ryan's approach to Social Security and cut a tax cut on the backs of people who need Social Security and who rely on Social Security. C totally out of context, but the headline was that Joe Biden relies and sides with uh, Paul Ryan. So it'll be interesting to see if Bernie Sanders Sanders and his campaign turn and run from that as well, apologize for that as well, because that came directly from the campaign and misrepresented right. Joe Biden's position over the years on Social Security.
Willie, how many times are we going to see this? How many times are we going to see surrogates and spokespersons and, 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 and advocates for Bernie Sanders say something that is out of pocket or wrong or a lie, and then Bernie Sanders waits until he gets in trouble and then yeah. tepidly apologizes for it? This is absolutely Trumpian. This is a step away from Kellyanne Conway saying alternative facts. And the largest issue to think about is this. If Bernie Sanders actually considers himself to be a front runner, if he just thinks that he actually can win this nomination, how is he going to stick? this party back together when he engages in these kinds of scorched earth campaign tactics. If you want to say that the other uh, you know, candidates you're running against are, are neoliberals and they don't care enough about health care, that's fine. But accusing people of lying, accusing people of policy positions that they never took and then never apologizing for it until you get busted, that's not how you become the front runner and certainly not how you build a successful campaign for 2020. We're at the top of the hour. Uh, let's go to Des Moines, Iowa right now and talk to John Heilman, who's obviously been following this very closely. John, um, of course, we just talked about how Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, uh, their staffs misrepresented or flat out lied about Joe Biden and his position on Social Security. Of course, Paul Krugman uh, had a major takedown uh, on Bernie Sanders for doing it. Uh, but right. you and I have have been asking each other on the air mm -hmm. and off the air for a week why the Sanders campaign is going so negative in a year when negativity is being punished by Democratic voters, um, especially, of course, when the negativity is focused on other Democratic candidates, and yep. after a time when Bernie Sanders got incredible news about being in first place in the Des Moines Register poll for the first time. So I, I don't understand. We, 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 this keeps happening. Why is this happening when Bernie Sanders was in first place and could have kept his head down? Yeah, seriously, Joe. I mean, you, you, you and I have been asking each other this question, and I've been in, in conversations now for the last eight or nine days with people in Iowa about this, Democrats here uh, on the various campaigns and unaligned who are, uh, have been surprised. Right after the Des Moines Register poll came out on that Friday now, not last Friday, but the previous Friday, you had Sanders spend that entire weekend attacking Biden, not on the things that we've mentioned already, you guys have been talking about this morning, but attacking him on Iraq, attacking him on entitlements, attacking him on a wide range of, of, of issues. He went kind of indiscriminately negative that weekend. Not him directly, but mm -hmm. a lot of surrogates, a lot of staff. He also starts so uh, John attacking Heilman, Pete Buttigieg. The question starts attacking is Elizabeth why? Warren. Why attack yes, him? Yes, I understand. Why I'm attack I'm getting... him when he's in first place? It makes no right. sense. I mean, again, right. there are times when negative, if, listen, here's the deal. If negative Negative campaigning works, and it's the truth. Do it. That's fine. But in this case, we—I mean, Bernie's been up on stage when he's seen Kamala go after Joe Biden. When he's seen other people attacking Joe Biden, it's not working for Democrats in 2020. They want the focus to be on Trump. So why? Do anybody, does anybody have any insight on the, as to why the Sanders team? has decided to do this in the closing stretch when history suggests this won't work. Well, yeah, that's where I was trying to go, um, was to the question of why. And I think that there is, again, I'm trying to tell you that people are perplexed across the board. It does feel like Sanders thought at that moment that there was, victory suddenly was in sight. And I think, you know, they're, learning the lessons of what's happened over this last year is your point. I think, you know, you've seen every Democrat get punished. When Democratic voters want to see uh, a focus on Trump, attacking other Democrats has hurt people. I think Sanders thought for a moment, or at least his campaign did, that there was, they needed to start to consolidate the left, and so taking out Elizabeth Warren became important. And they see Biden as the main obstacle they have towards the nomination. Now, I think you and I would agree, and especially a lot of Iowa Democrats think, guys, you guys are on a roll here. You, 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 can, you can coast, not coast, but you should not get into a negative battle that we know famously, not just in this cycle, but Iowa voters don't like negative campaigning. It's hurt almost every candidate cycle after cycle who's engaged in it here. But I think Sanders suddenly saw in a way like that if he kind of sprinted for the finish 
finish line and knocked over a bunch of people on the way, he could get there. And I'll tell you, we, we were corresponding yesterday about this Focus on Rural Iowa poll that came out yesterday. Uh, David Binder, uh, uh, a former Obama pollster, very well-respected guy who's been doing this poll for the farmers here for the last year. And you saw Bernie Sanders after these two very strong polls for him, uh, the Monmouth poll and the, and, the, and the Register poll, you suddenly see Sanders down in this poll, which was taken after the debate. They went into the field the day after the debate. Sanders down at 14 percent and in fourth place. And I'll say most importantly, most striking in that poll, when they, they did something a lot of pollsters haven't been doing, which is asking people, if your candidate doesn't clear the 15 percent threshold, who's your second choice candidate, right? And they ranked those candidates. Sanders had 6 percent was in fifth place with 6%, wow. suggesting not just that he's at only 14 in that poll, but that on caucus night, unlike Joe Biden, who could pick up 24% of the unaligned vote, or Elizabeth Warren, who's up near 20, Pete Buttigieg in the mid-teens, Sanders down at six, which tells you almost no one who's for Bernie Sanders here going into caucus night is gonna be willing mm -hmm. to possibly shift their vote to him on the second alignment. And that is a huge problem for Bernie Sanders if he thinks he's gonna win the Iowa caucuses. Which makes you wonder even more uh, why this approach, to totally. what end? John Meacham. Well, I would ask John and Joe, what is it about Sanders himself, right? I mean, we saw, I, I thought one of the most interesting things out of the whole New York Times uh, editorial rollout uh, to their double endorsement was uh, when Sanders said, if you want someone to say happy birthday to you, don't vote for me. Because I don't say happy birthday, which seems like an odd principle on which to which to stand, uh, which is the diametrical opposite of, of Biden. Uh, is Sanders someone who is a political killer here, and sort of uh, does the does the crotchety older guy? Uh, the aging socialist who wants to lift up the people is all for the people, but not doesn't particularly like the person. Is that what's going on? Well, I, uh, I mean, I, I think that Bernie Sanders, the thing that attracts so many people to Bernie Sanders, John Heilman, and I, is what I think I'd love to hear what you say, is that he is an anti, anti politician. He's not going to say yeah. happy birthday. He's not going to kiss babies. He's not going to trim his sails. It's full steam ahead. Bernie's going to tell you what he believes, he's going to fight for what he believes, and you can go back 25, 30 years, and chances are very good what he believes today is what he believed 25 or 30 years ago, and that's very admirable in a politician. Sometimes, though, uh, it doesn't, John Heilman, get you over the finish line in first place. Right. I'd say something else, Joe. I agree with all that. But, I, I, you know, I want to give Sanders his due here. I was at an event that he did last night in Des Moines right before he flew back uh, for the impeachment trial. Very, very well attended. Um, a, a lot of energy in the room. And and one of the, the flip side of Sanders not maybe not having the ability to grow his coalition very much is that his hardcore is passionate for him. They are, and I'm going to get killed by the Sanders people on, on Twitter for this, but he is a little bit of the inverse, the, the mirror image of Trump. His base is very solid, is very enthusiastic, is committed to him through thick and thin. And I think that what the campaign does in some of these instances is those voters who love Bernie Sanders do have a view that every Everyone else is corrupt. Do have a view that all of the rest of the conventional politicians, from the moderate ones to the center left ones to the conventional left ones, that they are all in some ways compromised in a fundamental way. They're corporate Democrats in some way, and they, they are railing not just about the corruption of corporate America, but the corruption of the Democratic Party. And I think that Sanders gets care that the, the campaign, in the same way Trump sees his base as the key to his political strength. Sanders sees his base as the key to his political strength. And they have a tendency to feed the base in this way by turning on these other candidates more than they do try to expand the coalition. And I'll tell you, Hillary Clinton's people will remind you from 2016 that, that, that this is not the first time Bernie Sanders has campaigned with a rough and sharp edge.